let me just say while the choir is coming around that the uh, Chris Pentecost will meet with all the men interested in the Wild Game Supper. You want to meet over here, Chris, on the piano side? Okay. You'll meet him up here in the front after the worship service on the piano side. And uh, that way y'all can talk about that. That's always a, a, not a good thing. Good thing. Turkey poppers and deer poppers are wonderful. Have y'all ever eaten those? Everybody? <coughs> My goodness, they're good. You had those? Everybody had those? No? No one. I look forward to that, Chris. I hope y'all. Have everybody shot turkey this year? Everybody got deer meat? Alright. Whenever you ask somebody to fix something and, and they say, well, sure, I'll get right to that. I'll fix that. But they never, ever come to fix it. What do you begin to think about that person? What do you begin to think? And girls, what if some old boy looks you straight in the eyes and he tells you how much he loves you, he just thinks you're the, you know, you're just the best thing that ever happened and he just loves you so much. But then you see him out with other girls, taking them out to restaurants and on dates and with other girls. What do you think? What do you think? Well, I want you to keep these thoughts in your mind as we look at Genesis chapter 15 this morning in verse 6. Look at verse 6. And he believed in the Lord, Abram. Abram believed in the Lord. And he accounted it to him for righteousness. Now, Abram was most certainly saved before this. I mean, Abram had believed God about a lot of things leaving his homeland for a country he didn't know about was one thing. And Abram had built altars to worship the Lord at different places. Abram trusted God about the land situation with Lot. So Abraham was most certainly saved before this time. Abram knew the Lord already. So what does this mean here? Well, it simply means what it says. Abram had believed God for his salvation. He had believed God for many things in many different situations. And here, he believed God once again. He kept on believing God. And God had told him that he would have more grandchildren than there is sand on the beach or in the desert. God had told Abram that he would have more grandchildren than there are stars in the sky. And Abram believed God. And so God counted his belief as a righteous deed. God looked upon it as righteous. You see, Abram is known as a man of faith. And God loves it when we live by faith. Now, it's not just faith in any old way, though. You know, you know what I'm talking about? It's faith in God. Faith in God. It's not faith that everything's going to be all right. It's not faith in a person. It's not faith in some mystical gobbledygook. It's faith in Jesus. It is faith in God that for him to do what he has promised that he will do. And we find his promises in the Word of God, the Bible. Now then, like Abel, we are all justified by faith if we're saved. We initially have to believe God about our lost sinful condition. We initially have to believe that Jesus died on a cross for our sins and that he rose from the dead. That's how we enter into the realm of a relationship with God. That's the kind of faith that we must have, first have, in order to know God, to be saved, and to know God. Then we need to keep living our life by faith until that day when our faith is made sight. We must live every day by faith until we see Jesus with our own two eyes. If we want to please God in our lives, we must live by faith. <coughs> the salvation is by faith. No one will earn salvation by good deeds. No one will deserve salvation by being religious. If there's anything that we can do that we think makes us deserve salvation, then it's no longer salvation by grace. It's no longer salvation by faith. Then salvation becomes something that God owes us. And that's not grace. That's not Bible either. That's not truth. So we're justified when we 
believe God about our lost condition and we believe God about our need for the Lord Jesus Christ. Dr. Jerry Vines said it like this. The word believe comes from a root word meaning establish or confirm. It is actually our word amen. It signals that the person has made a decision to treat God's word as certain and has made a commitment to do what God wants. You and I are saved because we put our weight on the promise of God. So the Bible says that when we repent or change our minds about God and about life, it means that we change our minds about rebelliously believing and living like we want to. And we're willing to go God's way in life. And we put our faith in Jesus Christ to save our souls. Then God counts us as righteous. It's by faith that God gives us grace. It's by faith that justifies us. And justification means that we stand before the Lord as people who are forgiven of all of our sins. In fact, God looks upon us as clean. God looks upon us as if we have never sinned in our entire lives. We're made righteous through our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now, forgive me, but I just want to have to take a second. <laughs> because my heart is about to explode with praise right now. My heart is so full of Jesus and his joy. I'm so thankful for this great truth that I believe I might just have to turn Pentecostal for a few minutes, so please forgive me. By the way, why don't we let the Pentecostals have all the fun? Why do we? I mean, Baptists should be shouting for joy. <laughs> Baptists should be overwhelmed by the goodness of God when we understand such truths. Baptists should be filled up in our hearts over great truths like this. And yet, most Baptists come to church and act like the dog died before they left the house. I'm serious. I'm serious right now. Most Baptists act like somebody slapped them in the face and stole them on their toe while they were singing songs of praise. And they're songs of joy, by the way. They're songs of joy. Joy. <laughs> they're not songs of sour pickles. And truths like justification should make us so joyful that we have just got to shout, Hallelujah! Praise you, God! Thank you, Jesus, Amen. for saving my soul. Instead, most Baptists will listen to the great truths that God preached and act like they just ate a mouth full of wasabi sauce. Y'all ever tried wasabi at a Chinese restaurant? Man, that stuff is so good. But it'll flat clean out your sinuses. <laughs> good gracious, good gracious. That wasabi is strong stuff. I mean, it's strong. First time I ever ate sushi, I thought I'd never eat sushi. I thought I'd never eat sushi. Phil Rowley, y'all know Phil Rowley. He kept after me. Try it, try it, try it, try it. I said, okay, I'll try something I know it's cooked. I'm not eating raw fish, but I'll try it cooked. He said, yeah, oh, it's, oh, some of it's fried. It's good. So I went to a Chinese restaurant. He said, now when you go, put wasabi on it. That'll make it better. So I got me a, I got me a, some of that sushi. And I had that green wasabi sauce. And I was just, I put, I just put it all over. I was putting it on thick. I was putting it all on there. I was like, okay, I guess you need to put it on thick. I didn't know what it was. And I put it, popped that in my mouth. And I ate it. And it's almost like my eyes started watering. And my head felt like about to blow up off the top. And I started slamming my fist on the table. I looked up the whole restaurant staring at me. I called Phil after I could talk again. I said, Phil, Rowley, you did to kill me, brother. I thought you loved me. And he laughed and laughed and laughed. That was soft. It's good stuff. But you got to go soft with it. Don't need it. A lot of bad you know, they walk in here like this. They ate a bunch of wasabi. <laughs> Nothing wrong with rejoicing, especially when you're hearing things like this. If I wasn't so bad 
Baptist. I'm probably going to dance it right now, but I've got Baptist legs. They hold me down. Folks, Abram was justified by faith, and Abram lived his life by faith. Yes. And the New Testament uses Abram or Abraham, as he was later called, as an illustration of faith. Look at Romans 4 with me. What then shall we say? That Abraham our father is found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as death. You see, salvation is by grace, not by works. No man will be able to stand before God one day and boast about how good he is and he deserves better. No man. Nobody. Look at Galatians chapter 3, starting verse 6. Just as Abraham believed God and was accounted him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scriptures, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing. <coughs> Dear people, we get saved just like Abraham did. We get saved by putting our faith in the Messiah, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Abraham put his faith in the coming Messiah. He didn't know the Messiah's name. But he did know that God would send a Messiah who would die for his sins. And we get saved today by putting our faith in the Messiah who came and died on a cross. And he was raised from the dead. Abraham got saved by looking forward to the Messiah. We get saved by looking back in faith at what the Messiah did. But we all get saved by putting our faith in in our Messiah, the Lord Jesus. Now the faith that Abraham had led to good works. Because Abraham had a real, genuine faith. I mean, Abraham believed God. And his faith caused him to do what God wanted him to do. Now, his works did not save him. His works did not cause him to be right with God. But real faith works. If you'll notice, when Abraham believed God, it caused him to do what he believed. He believed and he did it. He believed and he did it. Now, don't lose me right here. Because this is of the utmost importance that we understand. We're saved by grace through faith and faith alone. But a real faith will not be alone. Folks, when somebody really, really believes God, then they will want to obey God. Now, I'm not saying that we'll be perfect, because we're not, are we? Take one look at a week with me, and you'll find out that. Don't ask Sherry if you tell you too much. <laughs> I'm not saying that we won't ever sin again. Of course we do. I'm not saying that we'll never mess up. But when somebody really gets saved, then their life changes. And if their life does not change, then they did not get saved. When we get saved, then we will want to live for the Lord. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us, and He changes our want to. He enlightens our minds to understand truth. And he breaks the grip that sin had upon our lives. We're set free to live for God. Look at James chapter 2, verse 18. Look what he said. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You, hey, you do well. There is only one God. <coughs> Then what he says, even the demons believe and tremble. They shake at the thought that there's a God. Even demons believe there's a God. Intellectually, they believe there's a God. They're not saved. They're going to hell if they believe there's a God. <coughs> Verse 20. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? 
Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So you see, somebody with a real, true, genuine faith will do good works. I mean, good works will naturally flow from the heart of somebody who really knows Jesus Christ. Listen, we see here that Abraham was saved by faith, and his faith showed itself by the way he obeyed God. And the same is true about you and me. If we're really saved by grace through faith, then we will want to obey God. We'll want to seek after the Lord. We will want to please the Lord who saved us. Before I got saved, I wanted to live for David Worthy. I wanted to do what I wanted to do, live like I wanted to live, be the man I wanted to be. I lived for me, me, me. After I got saved, God changed my want to. After that, I wanted to live for Him. I wanted to know Him. I wanted to praise Him. I wanted to know more about Him. God changed my want to. He changed my heart. Let me illustrate this. What if I told Sherry that I love her with all my heart? And I asked her to marry her, which she did, by the way. But what about if, what if after we were married I never saw her? I mean, I, I lived in a completely different house. I never ate supper with her. I never took her out to a movie or to a restaurant. I never called her on the phone. I never sent her a text. I never kissed her. I, I never even hugged her. I didn't even call her sweetie pie or honey bun. I just lived my own life. And let's say that I even dated other women at the time too, you know. Would she believe that I really loved her? Would you believe that I truly love Sherry? If that's how I acted, would you? No, of course not. Why? Because that's not how people act when they're in love with someone, right? Right? then how in the world can people say they're saved and they don't seek the Lord? They don't obey the Lord. They don't come to church to worship the Lord. They don't want to serve the Lord. They don't even want to talk about the Lord. They don't even want to talk to the Lord by spending time in prayer. How can we really believe that these people are truly saved if they have no desire to live for God who supposedly saved their souls? You see how works should back up a genuine faith in our works? And if there are no signs of life in a person, then there's no life. There's no life. You get a guy into, a, into an emergency room and he don't have a heartbeat. He he's, not, he's not taking breaths. There's no brain activity. There's no signs of life. You know he's dead. If there are no signs of faith, then there's no faith. Now again, I'm not saying that you're going to be sinless. I'm not saying that you'll understand everything about the Bible. I'm not saying that you'll instantly become a mature Christian like, like a Billy Graham or an Adrian Rogers. I'm not saying that you'll never have times when you drift away from the Lord or, or you might even rebel and backslide. Please don't misunderstand what this is saying right here. It's simply saying that a person's heart and life will change after they really get saved, their life will change. So have you believed God? Did you put your faith in Jesus to save your soul? And did your heart change? Did your life change? Did that faith inside of you cause you to want to live for God? Did it want to work its way out of your heart into your everyday living? Did Jesus begin that lifetime journey of changing you into his likeness? Did you see a change in your life? Did you see God working in your life? 
Do you see that? If you do, then rejoice. You're saved. You put your faith in Christ. He changed your life. You love the Lord. You want to live for God. Rejoice. But if you didn't, then check out your heart and your soul. Make sure that you've got the real thing. Make sure that your faith is genuine and real. <laughs> Folks, Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him as righteousness. And it resulted in Abraham living for the Lord, obeying God, seeking after the Lord. Abraham loved the Lord. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? My friend, if I wasn't sure of my salvation, I wouldn't walk out of those doors this morning. I go grab that preacher and I say, please, preacher, I want to know, I want to be sure, no doubts. Let me tell you something. If I get in my car and I drive to that Mexican restaurant, bitch, where do you go? <coughs> and I get down there and somebody runs the stop sign and plows into me. You hear this afternoon, boy, the preacher died before they could get him down to Jackson, Denver. I want to tell you something. Let me tell you something. You won't have to worry another doubt about where, I, where I'm at. I'll be with Jesus. I will be with Jesus. My faith is in Christ. Save me. God looks upon me as one God. And I know, 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 and I know that I belong to Him. Yes. And I'm going to pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. If I didn't know that I know that I know that I know, don't try to get to heaven on a hope so salvation. <coughs> you need to bank on a no so salvation. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people out there today going to heaven. Oh, I hope so. Why don't you live your whole life with that kind of uncertainty? Every day you get up out, out, out of bed, you, you don't you don't, really don't know for sure you're going to heaven or not. Why would you live a day like that? I, I don't understand that. I'm going to live my whole life with this uncertainty. Well, boy, I sure hope I do. No, no thank you. When I lay my head on the pillow at night, it feels so good. To know Amen, yes. But I put my head on my pillow, and God is with me. When I get up in the morning, God is with me. When I walk through the day, God is with me. He's got his hand on me. He's got a hold of me. And that's a grip that no one can ever put on his have a holy spell up here. If I talk about this anymore, I'm going to have one. God has a hold of me. I belong to him. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. This morning, if you don't know him, please be saved this morning. We're going to stand. We stand together. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. You need to come. Please come. Do what God wants you to do. I will stand and I will stand. It's a hymn of invitation. Maybe it's a hymn of invitation to you. Maybe it's to you. Listen to the Lord. While we sing.
Amen. Mm-hmm. 